Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you feel so inclined. We will be tying a October caddis from the family Limnophilidae. Fill the thread base using two bobbins. I prefer Simperfly Nano Silk 30 Denier. Make an angle cut and fulling mill nymph wrap 3 millimeter. Secure in place at the quarter way point of the hook shank. Make three wraps and secure in place just behind the eye. The Limnophilidae represent a diverse family of aquatic insects within the order Trichoptera, which translates to hairy winged. They are one of the most species rich Trichoptera families of the northern temperate regions. Only a few are known from tropical areas and the southern hemisphere. For this reason, the Limnophilidae are often known as the northern caddisflies. Whip finish and remove the first bobbin. Now advance your rear bobbin forward, wrapping into the first segment using the rear edge of the middle segment. Now we'll take golden pheasant tail barbs to create the legs. These insects are characterized by their larval stage during which they construct protective cases for materials like sand, pebbles, and plant fibers, showcasing a remarkable range of camouflage and architectural ingenuity. Cut the excess of the first set of legs. Trim the ends if needed. Now create your second set of legs using the golden pheasant tail barbs. These barbs are plucked from the stem and the follicle is the end point of each leg. Give several snug wraps to lock in place. Cut the excess and create the four legs using the golden pheasant tail barbs. Willem to fill a day are found predominantly in freshwater environments, such as streams and rivers. They play a crucial role in aquatic ecosystems by contributing to the breakdown of organic matter and serving as a food source for various predators. Their presence is often an indicator of water quality, with certain species being sensitive to tote pollution. As adults, these caddisflies emerge to mate and lay eggs completing their life cycle and perpetuating the ecological balance of their habitats. Typically on the natural, the rear legs are the longest, middle legs second longest, and the fore legs are the shortest. Cut away the excess. As you can see, we have three thoracic segments and a head. Whip finish. And cut away the bobbin. Now to create the dark head and the dorsum. 
we use a Copic marker in brown. To finish off the head, I use a flex resin from Solaris. This cleans the head and gives more durability. To add the durability and 3D effect to the thorax, I use an ultra-thin flex resin from Solaris. To create the base for the case, I use a silicone seal it. This particular one is from Silco. Spread out the silicone as well as you can. The sand and pebbles that I use were collected from local streams. I store them in a fondue cup. So all I have to do is drop the fly in and it adheres to the silicone. Now to get your desired effect. Over the years, researchers have conducted many studies on the function and use of these cases. The research revealed nuanced benefits of the extensions for these caddis flies. You'll have to keep adding pebbles and sand to get the effect that you want. Next, we'll add the extensions. These pieces of plant matter were also collected from local streams. You use the same silicone sealant to adhere the plant matter to the fly. These extensions have many benefits. Researchers found that it gave them stabilization in high flow areas. The caddis flies with extensions rolled over less frequently and recovered their footing more quickly than those without the extensions. The extensions add to the case's stability, helping the larvae maintain their position in high-flow environments. The stabilization reduces the risk of being tipped over and washed downstream. They also found there was no significant difference in predation rates between larvae with or without extensions. Therefore, the primary role of the extension is not to deter predators, but to enhance stability. The added width and weight make the larvae more resistant to being tipped over by water currents, allowing them to explore and forage in areas with stronger flow 
than would be otherwise possible. I'm using a heated tweezer to create bend in the legs. The fish don't care, but I do. The extensions in these cases are a clear example of how organisms can adapt to their physical traits to better fit their ecological niches. In this case, the adaptation allows the caddisflies to exploit a larger portion of their habitat, which can be crucial in environments where resources are limited. The studies not only shed light on specific adaptations of case caddis, but also demonstrate the broader principle of how seemingly small modifications in behavior or morphology can have significant ecological and evolutionary consequences. It's indeed pretty darn cool how these tiny adaptations can impact their survival and distribution of an organism and its environment. So we're making the final touches on the outer part of the case. Again, not necessary, but my OCD kicked in. A bodkin helps immensely in this process. Instead of using the silicone, I just used Flex UV resin to adhere some of the outer sand and pebbles. Again, please subscribe and thank you for watching.